Welcome to the video on how to do a drip cake uh, with sprinkles. For this cake, it's a vanilla cake with a chocolate buttercream filling. Uh, so first to start off, as you can see, you want to make sure that you get the filling level between each of the layers. Flip the other cake on and squeeze out again. Um, I prefer to always use the bag whenever I can um, and then using this smoother to get it nice and level before adding on the third tier. Just kind of spreading that around until I feel like it looks pretty smooth and level. Add that third tier and then I do a vanilla buttercream uh, crumb coat. So crumb coat's really important. Make sure that your final layer, layer of frosting goes on really smooth. Um, and again, like it says, as a crumb coat, you're protecting from any crumbs actually showing through. So rather than doing a chocolate one, we went with vanilla buttercream, uh, since that's what the client asked for. It's also important too when you do this crumb coat to make sure you get it really smooth for this final layer of our blue exterior buttercream that we have. So going through and placing it on like so, make sure that you fill in any gaps as it goes along so we get a nice smooth finish whenever possible. And then use your spatula to go ahead and smooth it through. Notice there's still going to be some areas that we have to go back through and repair, but we can definitely do that with excess that comes off on it, like so. Or we can always grab a bag and squeeze it out as well, too. So spinning around until you feel like the sides is smooth, and then I move to the top. So here, making sure it's nice and smooth as we go. and then edging it out. So I always like to get a nice, clean, sharp edge. Awesome, so now I added the sprinkles. I um, always like to do it with a spoon. It gives you a little bit more control rather than using your hand, plus a little bit cleaner and safer as well too. Uh, so moving it around, having the cookie sheet, as you can see, is really helpful. Um, it allows any of those excess sprinkles to end up there rather than on your floor um, and countertop, which can be definitely a pain to clean up. So chocolate drip time. So this is just some candy melt mixed with some heavy cream, um, mixed some white with some bright pink. So it's a little bit of a fun color going through. You want to make sure that the candy melt's not too warm. Otherwise, you risk it sliding all the way down, so you want it to make sure that it ends at a really good level there as well. So I was tested out on like a bowl or something before. Pour the rest of it on. Uh, you can see here, looking at it, I'm pouring probably a little bit too much. Uh, so I wanted to show you guys that definitely not perfect. The first time you can see those drips, like I said, it was still a little too warm sliding into my sprinkles that I definitely didn't want to have happen. Uh, so going through and trying to smooth it. Tried this, as you can see again, that not quite setting on that ch chocolate melt. Uh, you can see it also overlapping as it goes over the sides. And there's the really bad part for it. So went back to the drawing board, scraped it off, and started again. Uh, so this is our second attempt here. Let the candy melt cool a little bit. Uh, make sure that it was at the right consistency that I actually wanted. And then when it came to the top, I learned my lesson of putting too much on. So limited the way that I was squirting it instead of dumping it. I'm just kind of squeezing it out and trying to cover as best as I can. Since I know that I'm going to have a sprinkled top as we'll see at the end, I'm not too worried about making this top part look pretty. Uh, I just want to make sure that it gets a good cover and those edges are taken care of. So here I wanted to do a rope border. Uh, so I used a bag with both purple and blue. Anytime that you stop and start, you want to make sure that you pick back up in the place that you left off. Uh, so you notice how the purple and blue always stay on the same size as each other. Again, using the spoon to cover the rest of that top in sprinkles. Really wanted to add to the bright colors and play throughout it. And here we're making a fondant bow. So rolling out the fondant, uh, you don't want to make it too thin. So that's why I have those edges on the sides. 
making sure that it's thick enough to support itself. This was actually made a couple days in advance just because you want to make sure that it gets nice and hardened, especially the fondant can be pretty soft when you first use it. So making the straight edges cut across so you have a nice long rectangular shape. And then you want to use this plastic wrap. It helps the bow keep its shape again. Fold them in and give it a little point so it gets that fun little bow shape. And then cutting a little extra and that's how you have it. Hope you guys like this. Um, definitely subscribe if you want more.